Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I, uh, it is another very bright and early uh, morning. I am far, when I mean far from a morning person, I mean far from a morning person. So um, I had a, we had a great conversation. Our pastor had a great conversation with us um, yesterday, uh, no Tuesday, at church, and uh, just uh, talking about how uh, every morning to wake up in a sacrificial way and and uh, and whatnot. And so I wanted to, uh, with that in mind, wanted to take um, my life into a, a deeper level. Hello. Miss Christina, hello, Miss Leanne. Uh, good morning to y'all. Uh, I take my relationship with uh, and my uh, disciplines to a deeper level. So I um, wanted to start waking up and uh, early and, and all that jazz. But I'm excited uh, to share with y'all something that happened uh, in service uh, yesterday. So uh, it's just crazy things that what, what God is doing right now. Uh, so... Let me figure, share this Facebook Live, and I encourage you, can you take a moment and can you share this live um, as we, uh, before we get started? Some, it's going to, man, it's, I'm, ex I'm stoked. I'm excited. Let me see, let me get this. Uh, um, our live right now, continue to, continuing. Sorry, almost done. On the story of Gideon. All right. So can you, uh, if you can, if you can share this video. And also, uh, uh, we have um, an Instagram, uh, Opening Eyes Ministries uh, is, our new, is our Instagram. And uh, we are launching a uh, a new product very soon. That uh, that we are going to do some giveaways um, fry, via our our Facebook and our Instagram. Thank you so much, y'all, for sharing it and um, and whatnot. So let me tell y'all what happened before we get into before we get into this work. Uh, so for those of you who do not know, uh, August, my wife and I. We travel full time as evangelists, and that's what we do. We we believe um, in the works of Jesus. We believe uh, that um, that book, as the book of Hebrews says, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We firmly believe that, right? And so um, we travel full time as evangelists, and and as we go, it's it's uh, our heart is not simply just to to preach a sermon. We want to see the hand of God demonstrated, right? And I, it is, and I think this is is a heart as a, as a believer that is not necessarily associated to some sort of title or some sort of church position, uh, uh, preaching the gospel and, and seeing it demonstrated. It is, is the, it should be the normality of, of our Christian faith. When you read about the great commission, uh, he tells them to go on all into the world, but he, but he, but he tells them lay hands on the sick. He said, uh, 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 cast out demons, things of that nature. So we're called to preach the gospel, but preach it um, uh, not simply with with wise. As, again, as as, he, as Corinthians literally says, my message and my wisdom is not with wise or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of Spirit's power. So man's faith not rests on mis wisdom, man's wisdom, but on God's power. So we're called to preach the gospel and see it demonstrated. So uh, yesterday. Um, we had a uh, youth service, so uh, um, we are currently um, helping in our church um, uh, at Trinity Church, TrinityFLA.com. Phenomenal church, yo! I promise, man, it is one of the, it is incredible. Again, like I said, there's no such thing as a perfect church, but this, but there's a perfect church for people, and this church is incredible. The leadership are awesome. Pastor Jamie, Pastor Schnell, the pastors there, it just, just it, it blows my mind. Uh, it's an incredible church, and uh, anywho, but. Um, but so in there, in service, uh, just service, man, just the atmosphere, um, 
I don't know, there was, if kids were tired, if it was burning, it, 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 it was crazy. So um, I get up there and I'm, I'm in the back because I'm, I'm, I'm working on um, uh, transitions and things of that nature and making sure we, we're smooth and I'm, I'm in the back. So I'm, uh, worship is just to get over and, um, and, and Leanne, great job, by the way, transitioning Leanne. Uh, Leanne, who's listening right now, uh, watching right now, uh, transition, she shared. But man, it was, but the atmosphere, I, I felt like we were, we were planting seeds to soil uh, that wasn't being tended to. And so, I, so it wasn't, the kids, it was like you were throwing a rock against the wall. You know, it, it was, wasn't going anywhere. So um, I, uh, I decided to piggyback on what Leanne was, was, um, was talking about and, and, what, and what was doing. And so anyways, so I, uh, I hear the Lord. Uh, saying to me that they're not answering the phone call, and uh, so I, I I began to share about when uh, when you get a phone call uh, or a text message, someone can call, try all they all they want to call you, to reach to you, to communicate to you, but it's your responsibility to to answer the phone. You know what I mean? If they're calling you or they're texting you, you have to press the answer button. You have to open the text message. Um, so. And the same thing, God is always trying to talk to us. He's trying to communicate to us. He's, he's trying to walk into our life, but we have to make a decision to answer the phone. And, uh, so, but there's three different options that, that can happen when you get a phone call. Uh, first, you, uh, you can answer the call. Second, you can send it to voicemail. Third, you can, uh, you can, um, you can put it on hold. And fourthly, uh, fourthly you, can, can, you can just uh, uh, ignore the call. So uh, we talked about and asked kids, man, what are you doing right in this moment? What are you doing right now? God is trying to call. God is trying to speak to you. Are you answering him, answering his phone call right now? Or are you putting him on hold saying, God, uh, I'm here for different reasons right now. Uh, uh, um, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you after I get crazy, after I, I, uh, I get older, when I, when I do all of my wild things, I'll put you on hold later. You know what I mean? Or uh, maybe... Same thing. Or maybe God, I'll put you on voicemail. Jesus, listen, yo, I know uh, you want to talk to me again, but I, listen, I you have a talk to me. I'm 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 at youth service right now, but my boyfriend's right there, my girlfriend's right there, and listen, and I and uh, I, I I just did my hair. I'm trying to look good for them, so uh, let me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. All right, and I'll, I want to hear what you say because I care about you, but uh, but you're just not in the proper order of my heart. You know, you're not the my priority, the one who I'm going to talk to and speak to. So uh, I, I, I'm going to send in the voicemail. So, uh, but then you got, you can literally just, you see the call, like, I want to talk to you, click, ignore the call. And so in the atmosphere, it was, uh, it was kids. And I'm grateful for a, a, a church that has, we have unsaved and unchurched and, and church and saved people. I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, but in that atmosphere where, where um, so many kids answer the call. So anyways, so this is where, this is where the shift happened. And so I'm up there, and I and I hear the Lord clearly. Uh, Bible says, "Desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy." Right, and so we should, we, we all of us again, our hearts and desires be people who will walk not simply not simply in persuasive words, but hear and walk in the demonstration of spiritual power. So I um, I I was uh, I heard uh, the Lord uh, give me a word of knowledge um, at that moment, right there at the moment, and it was a blue car uh, a car accident, blue car car accident, right. At that moment, and um, and so I told him I rather felt in fear, and I shared that. Uh, so the, I hear the Lord telling me this, uh, and this means something to somebody. Uh, and it was two, two, in, uh, a blue car and a car accident. There's something that happened to you, blue car and car accident. Come to find out, moments before um, uh, I shared that uh, word of knowledge, someone uh, just got in a car accident, like moments ago just got in a car accident and text one of the kids there just got in a car accident and a blue car you know what i mean so we, so we were able to stop what we were doing and intercede and pray uh, for these people right then and there uh the word of knowledge was given but here's the crazy thing all right uh you can literally live you can literally hear <gasps> like oh snap how did he know all of that what, what in the world what, what in the world and it was so awesome the opportunity god was giving especially right after us talking about hearing the voice of Jesus, that a word of knowledge was, was being communicated right there. It was, it was so tight that um, 
that 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 happened because now these kids' ears are thinking like, hold up, what's going on? And so we were able to talk about, you know, if 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 God is real, if if heaven is real, heaven is real, hell is real. You know, we were able to talk about all that, and then and so and so now you can see their attention starting to shift. And the signs, wonders, and miracles, God never gave it or presented to us for us to have some 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 show or be some uh, this this superstar Christian. No, he all those the ministry signs and wonders and miracles, the the the, the prophecy and, and the nine gifts of the spirit, and all that stuff. All that is given to us is to is to lead people to the Lord. Everything points to salvation. Everything. Okay, it points to sozo. It points to be made whole. It be made well. All right, and so um, and so from there. Uh, more prophetic words started coming. More, more words of knowledge started coming in. And um, and man, I, I heard the Lord uh, say that. Uh, and again, this random stuff that there was someone that you your life literally changed. There was a place of crisis right at or by a Waffle House. And I'm like, this is the. And I'm in my mind. I'm like, this is the the most ridiculous word of knowledge uh, I have. You know, what I mean, I have ever heard. But all of a sudden, man, this kid at, at the service like just got rocked into whatever place of crisis happened to them. And, and we're going to follow up, but happened at a wa or by a waffle house, literally marked or changed their life. And so at a waffle house. And then uh, from there, um, what happened? And from there again, start more on words and knowledge and stuff started coming, but then the um, healings and miracles started happening. And um, we started praying for people. Uh, we had a kid who, who had a, 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 what do you call that? Um, but you can't hear a, a deaf ear, a, 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 a ear that they could not hear out of. And um, so uh, we prayed for we we prayed for this girl, and uh, God opened up her ear. And, um, and so the, so and so these kids were now they were seeing they heard prophetic word that man God wants to speak to us, and now they're seeing the heart of the Father that He wants now He wants to use us. And so we pray for ear, and God opened up her go opened up her ear. There was a kid who came in in crutches, literally in crutches, like. Uh, the whole day and all the time he, he hurt his leg and whatnot on crutches. Um, and it's cool because everyone else saw him on crutches. And um, and so God healed him as well. And uh, and he, he was he came in with crutches. He walked out with crutches. And what's crazy is this. This kid goes to the Christian school there and and um, everyone saw him walking with crutches. And um, his dad, his dad uh, uh, walked in and he's like, yo, you see my boy? Uh, what happened today? And so he couldn't even walk, blah, 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 blah. And so he's on all that to say, all these miracles and stuff that happen and everything, all of it leads to Jesus. All of it leads to salvation. All of it leads to, to, to people recognizing God's hand. And so we had a phenomenal service yesterday. And I believe a service that, that, that has shifted the norm of, of, of the Anthem Youth Ministry. And so I, wanna, I, want, I, I was super excited because uh, I wanted to share that with you before we get into this word, because it's, it's connected to this, um, because Gideon was someone that God was raising up. But the but the the pinnacle of Gideon's success, the, the foundation the, 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 uh, of Gideon's success um, and what God has called him to do was his ability to hear the voice of Jesus, his ability to hear the voice of God. And so. Um, so I don't know if those of you who are, uh, maybe some of you are driving, which is which is awesome that that um, that that you're listening on your way to work, and but those of you who maybe maybe at a place where you can open up your Bible, um, to Judges chapter six, uh, just to um, recap, uh, yesterday we talked about the state that the Israelites was currently in. Uh, uh, thank y'all, praise God. Uh, the Israelites was currently in. We talked about how the Midianites came in and uh, and they were uh, taking um, all the crops and uh, taking all their livestock and taking all their plunder and, 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 and robbing and taking all that jazz. And finally, Israelites heard, uh, Israelites made the decision to cry out to God and God now raised up this man in Gideon. So the angel Lord came to Gideon as he was uh, threshing wheat in a wine press, meaning he was literally hiding uh, while he was threshing wheat in that wine press. And, and he went to Gideon, he pointed, and he said, he said, God is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And he was like, what? 
how can you say the Lord is with us when all this stuff is happening? He, he said, uh, when, when, when he said, but sir replied, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening to us? Where are all the wonders our fathers told us when they said, uh, did, but did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Uh, all et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so he had the question that many of us would have when you see a time of crisis or when you see something bad happen, when you watch the news, something crazy happen, you're like, yo, if God is so good, if God is so powerful, then why all this stuff is happening? So Gideon, he, he is speaking from a place that many people uh, is, is currently, uh, currently at in their walk with the Lord is that, uh, number one, they don't feel qualified in what God has called them to do, and they don't understand God's hand. So we talked about yesterday that, that God spoke to Gideon's seed. God spoke to Gideon's potential. God just spoke to who Gideon was called to be. He spoke to the you that would address the us. But Gideon said, Lord, if, that, uh, if the Lord is with us, God wasn't addressing the us. God was going to take care of the us, but the us was going to be taken care of with the you. Gideon, but God, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. So again, as I said last week, family, your us, what if your us is connected to your you? What if you, what if the, the, the change in your us is connected with you rising up, you being the voice, you being the hands and feet of Jesus, the billboard of the most high God, uh, it, 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 you uh, uh, stepping up into your, um, into your 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 anointing and your purpose as the Gideon of your home, the Gideon of your city, rising up even when you don't feel qualified for it. So and so now continuing into what uh, we were discussing uh, yesterday, um, it says it says uh, where all the, he say he began to say where are all the the wonders our fathers told us about uh, about when they said did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt. And, uh, uh, but now the Lord has abandoned us and, and out of the hands and out of the hands of Egypt. But what I love this, all right. So Gideon he goes through all of his things and why he's not qualified. You know Moses did a similar thing uh, when he was sharing when he was commissioned to do something great. He told the Lord that man, I'm, I, I I don't speak eloquently and and um, and all this other jazz. What in the belief when I go? He gave all God all the reasons. And here's one thing, my family. And I want to ask you this question as well. Really ponder this. When it comes to the things God is calling you to do, are you giving God excuses or are you giving God reasons? Um, because a lot of times our reasons are excuses. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, well, I, 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 God, I got to I got to let me graduate first or well, let me get older first or, or when I have enough money or when this lines up or when it lines up, God, then I will do what you're calling me to do. Bam. Yo, that's not a reason. That's an excuse. Because when Jesus is calling you to something, you got to trust the fact is he already know your reasons. He already knows your current situation. He knows what your bank account look like. He knows what your schedule is like. He knows where your life is at that current moment. And yet he will lead you and guide you along the way. But listen, he's not going to put your purpose uh, on layaway because you don't feel qualified for it. No, we, this is how good God is, yo. God, God is like on-job training. It is on job training. He's not going to, he, he, yeah, do I believe in Bible school? Do I believe in all that stuff? Absolutely, yes. So don't get a twist what I'm saying. So I, I, I believe in, 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 in continuing education. But when God is calling you to something, when he put you in a place, you in a situation, it's on job training. It, it, Gideon is receiving on job training. God is not saying, and, and, I, and this, why am I saying this? Because these, these words that the Lord uh, told Jesus is just, I mean, told Gideon, is just so phenomenal, right? And uh, has any, let me ask you, have you been, have you been in a, have you been in a place, uh, let's say in your life, in your ministry, where you really felt like God uh, taught you as you went, like on job training sort of thing? Uh, well, cause, cause this is, look what the Lord uh, told, uh, told Gideon in verse 14. He said, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand, am I not sending you? Whoa, yo, we, yo, man, yo, we, let's, oh my gosh, that is so tight, that is so awesome, Jesus is, I mean, the Lord's response, and this is why people believe some of this is a theophany, and uh, anyways, but uh, verse 14 is, is, is so profound to me, because listen, once again, it's not that God is stupid, because he's not, it's not that he's ignorant, because he's not. It's the fact that he fathers. 
of he 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 is just like the same way he raised Moses. Remember when Moses walked, walked to the burning bush and God told him to go back to Egypt? He's like, y'all, no, no. He, again, he said, who gave man? He, he said this. He said, who gave man his mouth? Right. And so he's like, yo, I, I, he, he, he didn't say, yo, he, he said, man, I'm the one sending you. And the fact that I'm sending you and calling you, is that not enough? It's the fact that God, uh, those of you who are watching right now, it's the fact that God has called you for such a time as this. Is that not enough? Is his word not enough for you? Is his word not enough for us? It's, 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 it's the fact that God is saying, I'm going to take care of you along the way. Is that not enough for us? You know what I mean? And later we're going to we're going we, we're to read that Gideon man he he just needs some assurance. And I'm not saying that uh, uh, asking and waiting for uh, confirmation is the wrong thing, but but Gideon like he he heard the voice. But again, you got to realize this dude struggled insecurities. He felt like he was the low of the low of the low of the low. That not only did he feel that way, but I'm sure he assumed other people saw him that way. So why in the world would God raise up him to speak to other people to free them out? But again, God. He moves and he raises us on on job training, right? So, so verse fourteen, and again, I mean, I just want to rest here for a moment. Uh, it, it, it's the Lord turned to him and said, "Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Go in the strength you have." You know what this? Now, I, I'm not. I'm sure I'm not the only one who felt this way. Sometimes you approach a situation and you're like, "Man, God, what in the world am I supposed to do? Uh, do I throw in the towel? Do 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 I quit? You know what I mean? Uh, with, like ministry gets hard. Like you know, my, I travel full time as evangelist, and man, Lord, some weeks, some months is awesome. Some months is like, yeah, this is this is too hard. And uh, so, do we throw in the towel? Do we quit? What in the world? But no, but again, go in the strength you have. God was. God didn't say, oh, "Okay, I'm going to come back until you feel qualified. I'm going to come back until you feel ready. I'm going to come back until there's a title in front of your name. I'm going to come back and, 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 until you you have you have all the money you think you need. I'm going to come back until your calendar's full. I'm going to come back until and until you have that job that you want. I'm going to come back. I'll see you later. I'm putting you on layaway. I, I'm putting you on voicemail. No, he said, "Go in the strength you have." You know what I mean? I, so when I do devos, when I when I do Bible studies, and again, this is I'm, when I when I do it, it's to me, it's not the amount you read, is is what is what you get out of it while you read, and um and so I used to like when I do the devos, I used to think, well, I, I gotta read like four pages or something like that, and or whatever, or two, three or four chapters, and I'm good. But but I don't believe that's for me, for myself. Maybe that's works great for you, but for me, I believe it's something so powerful. You take the scenic route in the word. Right. And um, and so. So just pausing here at verse 14. When the Lord is saying, go in the strength you have. Man, I just want to I want you to ask. I may, maybe you can type has uh, 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 maybe type your responses. Have uh, what what have you been in a situation where where um, you maybe God put you in a situation. Job promotion, anything at all where you felt a little not that's not. Like I want to use the word I want to use is maybe not ready for it, maybe maybe unqualified, but all of a sudden, man, you saw the hand of God in your life, and you saw Him, you saw Him uh, uh, move and 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 raise you and train you. If that if you've been in a situation, go ahead and type. Let me know. Let me know. And so He said, "Go in the strength you have." And this is the thing. This is what I love about the Lord. Is that the Lord again? He is always speaking to our seed. When He approached Gideon, He said, "The Lord is with you, mighty warrior." He wasn't speaking to Gideon's present uh, necessarily. He was speaking to Gideon's seed. He was speaking to his potential. The Lord is with you. And he, and, and he said, go in the strength you have. Uh, the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I mean, the, 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 the Bible is, is filled with promises that speaks to God never leaving us. He's never forsaken us. He strengthens us. He said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand, am I not sending you? Why did, why did, there you go. Yo, it's Leanne, you preached that chapel and it was powerful, my sister, powerful. I still remember uh, uh, vividly all the kids coming and giving their life to Jesus, or chasing after the Lord. And I remember seeing teachers uh, uh, wipe the tears from their eyes. Leanne, it was powerful. I'm proud of you uh, for doing that. And, 
But I think, but man, just those, why would Jesus, why would God, why would the Lord say those last couple of words? Saying he said something very similar, um, very similar to uh, to Moses. Uh, Miss Amy, uh, being made leader, 22 people at a set. Come on. That's awesome. That is awesome. You're like, man, what do you do at the moment? That's incredible. But here's the thing. God did, would never put you into a situation if he wasn't placing you in a situation where he, where, where he can grow you and if, and you're qualified for that moment. Cause this, cause this, because this is, if there's anything, if there's anything else, if God didn't say any, if God didn't say the Lord is with you, mighty warrior, if God didn't say go on the strength you have, if God didn't say any of that, the only thing, uh, 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 yo, Jonathan, yeah, miss y'all too in Fort Wayne. God bless you, bud. Uh, the only thing that God could have said that should have hushed Gideon up, first and foremost, an angel visiting you in the first place will probably get your attention, right? But was this, was what he said at the end, am I not sending you? You know, the, the, the fact that God is sending us, the fact that God has called you should give you confirmation and enough that he's going to take care of you. The Bible says he watches over his word to see that it is fulfilled. The Bible says being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you is faithful and just to see it to completion. The Bible says that, 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 uh, that his word will not return to him void, but accomplish what he desires and achieve the purpose which he sent it. You mean the fact he said, he told Gideon, yo, he said, okay, he said, I am I not with you? I'm with you right now. You know, and so I, he, we need to realize, family, whenever Jesus is calling us to a high level, whenever he's calling to a purpose, maybe, maybe you're at a job right now that, man, you just feel like you just don't like. Maybe you're at a place in your life right now that you don't want to be. Maybe, maybe you, uh, you, you got promoted in something. You're waiting for God to do something in your life that you may not want to be presently in. But this is what you need to know. If when, in the midst of your frustration, do not quit. Do not throw on the pop. Do not throw on the towel. Do, uh, 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 do not digress from your purpose um, because this simple thing is what's going to shift everything in your life and in our life is the fact of the matter is, is God saying, am I not sending you? Am I not with you? All you need is him. Psalms 23, a verse that we quote all the time, right? That even when you were little, you probably memorized. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Why, does, why is that? Why do not fear any evil? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I, I remember something, and I shared this at Chapel, yeah, Chapel another awesome message we had. And uh, uh, yesterday, but uh, and um, uh, <laughs> and um, yo, I'm telling you, uh, uh, Miss Amy, fought it for three months, but didn't want to. But I'm so thankful you gave God your yes. You have no idea what what's gonna happen in your future because you stepped into and stepped into the opportunity God was giving you. Incredible. But I remember in I, uh, this happened years ago. I was praying and and um, I was seeking the face of the Lord and pondering and. And I was uh, I was going through something, and I was uh, and, uh, and I hear the Lord tell me so clearly. He said, "Timothy, I'm not just your travel agent; I'm also your tour guide." I'm like, I'm like, man, that and it moved me, it rocked me. Because let me explain the words Jesus said. He said he again. He said, "Timothy, I'm not just your travel agent; I'm also your tour guide." I was in a place in my life where I didn't know what in the world was going on. When I started traveling as an evangelist, I stepped away from an, um, and I just spilled coffee in my Bible. I stepped away. Um, on um, uh, stepped away from a um, a full time youth pastoring opportunity. Uh, I I mean I loved it. A church stepped away from it, and and I started uh, traveling and nowhere to go. I would sleep in my car, eat peanut butter and jelly. I I'd do whatever. I mean I, I wanted to see this this promise got placed in my life happening. So um, anyway, so I, I was I was frustrated. You know what I mean? I, it's not where I wanted my life to look at right now, but. I believe any dream worth doing was worth starting. I, how many the apples happen in the garage? How many, how many Fortune 500 companies happen in garages? You know what I mean? By two people who had a dream or someone who had a dream. So I um, so I wanted to go. So anyways, the Lord told me, Timothy, I'm not just your travel agent. I'm also your tour guide. And a travel agent back in the day before we could do anything, everything on our phone, a travel agent would be someone that will make a plan for you. They'll literally make a vacation. Like, look, hey, this you want to go. This is where we're gonna happen. You got, we got a cruise for you. You want this? This is my plan for you. But um, a travel, but a tour guide doesn't make a plan. It goes with you across. Uh, with it, it's there at the place of destination. So, 
So when the Lord told me, he said, Timothy, I'm not just your travel agent. He is saying this, Timothy, I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. Bigger than what you are seeing, I have a plan. And for are the plans, uh, what is Jeremiah 21? The plans I have for you to close nothing harm you but to prosper you. Plans to give you hope in the future. You need to know right now, if you're in that Gideon moment, God is calling you to a place that you feel not qualified for it. You need to know a couple of things. First and foremost, go in the strength you have. Secondly, uh, he is sending you. And because of he is smack dab in the middle of what he's calling you to do, you know, you best be realized he has a plan. He is your travel agent. He has a plan for your life. No matter how uh, bad it may seem in your life right now, how great it may seem right now. No matter, no matter if you're in your midst of your valley or on top of your mountain, he has a plan. And God really will work out everything for your good. So he has a plan, right? And um, in the midst of that plan, uh, 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 he'll work it all for your good. But again, he said, Timothy, I'm not just your travel agent. I'm also your tour guide. And the tour guide is very significant because the tour guide is not the one that makes the plan and um that ma that makes the plan oh awesome man uh that that makes the plan if the tour guide is the one that that's with you on the destination if you go on a safari if you're in australia you're going to, if you're in africa and you're walking uh through the bush and there's lions stuff like that a tour guide is one that's going to tell you uh stay in your stay in your car take vehicle, take pictures from the vehicle if you're walking in new york and and you're going through a tour guide one is going to tell you don't go down that valley don't 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 uh, don't go this direction. A tour guide is one who's going to communicate with you directions along the way. God does the same thing. The Holy Spirit does the same thing. He will tell us where to go, where we shouldn't go, what job deal you should get, what church you should go to. You know, he will he will minister you in that way. So in my place of of of, of crisis or in my place of, of 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 frustration, the Lord spoke to me these two things. Timothy, I have a plan for you, and trust me, I will lead you. And, I'm, and you need to know this today, wherever in the moment you're in, Amy, when uh, Miss Amy, when you answered that, uh, that, that call to lead all those people, he had a, God had a plan for you, and he qualified you, and he's walking with you. Uh, Leanne, when you shared in, in, at chapel, uh, God had a plan for you, and he walked with you. And so everybody here, when you walk in this devotion today, uh, and we're going to obviously continue the story of Gideon, uh, but I wanted to rest on this uh, as we took this journey and. Uh, God is not just your travel agent. He's also your tour guide. God told Gideon that most, those, those profound two phrases. He, he told him what? He said, go in the strength you have. You can do this. You know that? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's not just a cliche. That's not just a cute graphic on a t-shirt. That's the reality of our faith. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. He gives you strength. And he's, and he's the one sending you. You need, uh, the fact that the Lord is with us is all we need to know. Because he will take care of the rest. Because the Christian faith, fam, is on job training. Because God fathers us. He literally will raise us up into, into a and to, uh, to a place he tended to remember when God went to Moses and again, same similar situation. Uh, he, the very first thing, man, he spoke, he felt, he felt super shy. He didn't know how to speak. But when you read throughout the story of Moses and Pat and right at the place where they are uh, uh, about to cross the Red Sea and, uh, and the Israelites were all scared. He, he said, he, he, he turned to them and he said this, uh, he, he said, he, he, he told them and he said, uh, uh, the, the Lord will deliver you this day. I mean, so here, this man that used to not even believe that God could do him, he didn't want to go. Now, since the, the Lord was doing, was at a place where he was confident in what God can do. How did that happen? That happened through on-job training. That happened through the Lord being Moses' tour guide as he spoke his plan. The, 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 uh, the burning bush experience was a tour guide. But that whole life in Egypt... Uh, no, I'm sorry. The Burning Gate experience was a travel agent, but his whole life in Egypt, that was a tour guide. You know what I mean? Gideon, he, he's about to have a tour guide, a travel agent, a tour guide experience to walk with him. But God said, you know what? Listen, I'm your travel agent. I got this. So I am um, ecstatic and excited uh, for everything that God is doing. And once again, just like yesterday, I wanted to take a moment to pray for you. 
and um and intercede and intercede for you uh what you, he has given us divine appointments for this travel uh, i had customers tell me that uh that i came at the right time never even meet them never meet come on jonathan that is incredible bro for such a time as this man god is I love it. That's Market Street Ministry. That is ministry. That is why Jesus is raising us up. That is why we have the gifts. It's not simply for a, sun a Sunday morning church experience. It's for everyday life, man. Thank you for being uh, obedient. Walk into that, man. Uh, uh, hey, man, God is about to blow up Market Street. Yo, I firmly believe it. We're taking the gospel should always been out uh, seeking out and broken out the four walls of the church, man. I'm, I'm excited. So uh, I'm going to take this moment. Actually, I want to take a moment of two things. I wanted to see maybe some of you had a comment that, that you, maybe you can add on what we we're talking about today. And, um, and uh, amen. And uh, that we were talking about today that um, I'm going to pull it off my computer so I can see a little better. Um, that we were talking about today. And also, we're going to take a moment to pray for any, any, uh, any prayer requests. All right. So if, if you have any uh, prayer requests, if you can go ahead and, and um, if you can go ahead and, and, um, and type your prayer request down, I would love to, I would love to pray for, for you, us, for all of us, um, all of us to pray. All right. So uh, I'm, I'm, again, thank you so much for waking up so early and joining me. Uh, Seven o'clock may not be early for, for, uh, for some of you, but for me, oh man, it's early. And uh, so, uh, if you have any any prayer requests at all uh, that we could, that we can pray for, uh, we, I, I want us to can just to uh, lift up Amy and everything that she's doing in her job. I just think that's incredible. Uh, Jonathan, can we, I, just, I definitely want to uh, lift you up and pray, man, as you continue to walk into uh, that marketplace ministry uh, that God is calling you to do. That you're obviously doing a phenomenal job in, man. Uh, God is so good. Um, um, my wife and I, uh, if you can continue to pray for us, uh, we have some uh, some huge needs coming up and uh, that we need for our ministry and um, for opening eyes ministries and uh, traveling and um, and a vehicle and all that other jazz. And so our, our the vehicle that we bought uh, is about to catch the ghost, give up the ghost rather uh, to travel. And, and so we're um, we're believing God uh, for a, 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 a truck. Uh, that we can travel out of and pull things. And I'll share with you a little more about it. So you can be praying for us about that. It's, uh, it's pricey. It'll be expensive. Uh, but I'm, but yeah, I believe this very thing is God and God not sending us. And I believe God is going to equip us. And, um, amen. Baby Timmy is going to roll. <laughs> right. And so, uh, and I needed something that can fit in. So, uh, so let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you um, for uh, all these amazing people who gathered us today. God, I pray for uh, Jonathan and everything he is doing, oh God, in his job and his marketplace ministry. God, I uh, I pray for Amy, God, during this time that where they're having to put their dog down today. God, I I I I I pray that you give them just a place of comfort and a place of peace with her and her family. God, that. That dog has been like a family member to them. God, I pray you walk with them during that time. Uh, God, I just lift up every other request. We even at Amy's job, God, I lift up uh, uh, Miss Christina once again, God, uh, during the play, uh, pregnancy. And uh, God, I pray for everybody. I pray for Leanne as she's graduating. She's a senior this year, and she's stepping out into her into her and into uh, her life. And in, in these ne literally these few weeks before she graduates, and Holy Spirit, I just lift up everybody here. And I thank you, Father God, that all of us, that we will remember that you are the one that's sending us, that you are with us, Father God. All we need to know is that you are with us. And that the fact that you're present, Jesus, is all the reason we need, because you will take care of everything, oh God. All we have to be is obedient, God. So may we answer your phone call. May we not press the ignore button. May we not never put you on hold. May we not send you to the, to the voicemail, Father God, putting you in a corner. But God, may we answer our calling and give God our yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, family, thank you so much again. I try to do these in like in 30 minutes. We went over a little bit. But uh, thank you for um, for joining me today at this uh, 7 o'clock devotion. Uh, I I was just wanted to, I was super excited of everything that happened in service yesterday about the signs and wonders and miracles and the salvations. And, oh, I mean, I forgot, the salvations were 
crazy at the end. You know what I mean? And why is that? Why is that? Because kids saw God demonstrate his hands. And there was a lot, we had a lot of visitors that day. People, I know some people was like, oh, man, we should stray away from the gifts because it's visible. No. 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 We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit being operated in our life. Visitors are not visitors. How do you know they came into that place needing of the healing, needing to hear the voice of God? Not simply just an eloquent sermon. They, we need the demonstration of Spirit's power in our ministries, in our lives in our everyday life, in our marketplace ministry, in your work, as you're leading those people, in, in uh, Amy, you, uh, in, in your job, as, 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 as uh, uh, Miss Terry, as you are working in the, your field, we need that. And so um, I appreciate all of you coming in uh, seven o'clock tomorrow. If you can, if you can like uh, our ministry page, and if you can please share this, uh, this, uh, this video is gonna help us out a lot. I am working on um, on uh, writing a book and 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 the, the shares and and the likes on our page. It helps uh, helps us uh, uh, get to a place where publishers will, will want to uh, to take us. So if you if you can like it, if you can like all of our social medias, it, it helps us a lot to set a platform for us launching our books. So uh, I appreciate everything. Oh, God bless you, uh, Jonathan. Thank you so much, man, and uh, for coming. I. Vivid remembers, vivid memories, uh, spending time with you and at your house and uh, with your family and us being in the presence of the Lord, worshiping, man. I'm glad your heart has not changed in that regard. So anyways, man, uh, God bless you. See y'all tomorrow, 7 a.m. as we continue our journey in the word. God bless. Bye-bye.